Hey guys, what's up? So, uh, I'm here to give you my Monday Night Raw review of last night, and, um, I'm sorry I couldn't give you guys some of my other Raw reviews for the past few weeks. I've just have been busy at school, and I just have had a lot of shit to do, so I apologize for that. But, I'm not gonna bullshit too much, but before I start, I wanna say congratulations to the Broncos and my Seattle Seahawks for... Uh, making it to the Super Bowl. Um, it'll be a good Super Bowl game, and I'm glad that my Seahawks are in it. And, uh, yeah, I just wanted to throw that out there. All right, now let's get into the Raw review. So, to start off the Raw, I thought they had, in the, on this Raw, Batista comes back, so that was exciting. And um, I just kind of want to talk about the main stuff. Some of the other bullshit I don't really want to get into, but uh, the main stuff for this Raw was Batista coming back, the, the face-off between Big Show and Brock Lesnar and John Cena brawling with Randy Orton at the end. But uh, to start off Raw, I thought they had a nice Martin Luther King intro opening to uh, honor Martin Luther King. So I thought that was pretty good and uh, good, and uh, kudos to WWE for a good intro. Then we had the corporation of Triple H and Stephanie McMahon come out. And they were about to uh, have Batista come out when they were interrupted by Randy Orton and Randy Orton tells them who the hell do they think they are they should be honoring the champion all this bullshit then Stephanie McMahon runs down Randy Orton and then Triple H says some stuff and uh, about to Randy Orton about how he should man up and about how he should face John Cena and all this other shit and about how Brock Lesnar and Batista were, were creeping down his neck or breathing down his neck Sorry about that, but basically Triple H and Stephanie, Stephanie McMahon are just running down Randy Orton and all that stuff, so. Sorry about that, guys. And then, uh, so then after all of that, then Batista finally comes out and he tell and he comes to the ring, grabs a mic, and uh, he takes forever to talk on the mic because he's, because he has uh, somewhat of a fan reaction. I will say I do agree with people. I wish that Batista's... I wish that Batista coming back was more of a surprise because since that people knew that Batista was coming back, <clears throat> there wasn't much of a fan reaction for him. I mean, some of the fans cheered. I mean, like, he got a pretty good reaction, but... I mean, I, I just think that it would have been better if it was a surprise, but whatever. And so Batista comes out, and he basically just tells Randy Orton straight out that Batista is back for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Batista is back to win the Royal Rumble. Batista is back to headline WrestleMania and to be the WWE World Heavyweight Champion. And so now this also makes me question if Batista is going to be a heel later on. I th he's a face for now. But once he gets that title, I think he's going to be working for the corporation. I, I think he is because the way it he greeted Stephanie McMahon and Triple H, it was like as if he had no beef with them at all. I mean, he, well, not that he ever did. I mean, he was a part of evolution and stuff, but... You know what I mean. I mean, I think Batista will be a uh, heel with the corporation, and then maybe he'll face Daniel Bryan for the title. I wouldn't mind that. Either way, and so all that. So I thought it was a pretty good start to Raw. Um, I would have liked Batista to say a little bit more, but his uh, his promo was effective. I mean, it was his first promo, so you got to give him some slack for that. Then next we had the Shield versus the Rhodes. Versus uh, Cody Rhodes and Goldust and Big E Langston. And The Shield won. I was kind of surprised to see The Shield win this match. Um, I thought the uh, others, I thought Cody Rhodes and Big E and all of them would win. And um, I just want to say, Roman Reigns, besides his uh, spear, his Superman punch is badass. I gotta say, his Superman punch that he did on, uh, I think it was Cody Rhodes, was just badass. So, Roman Reigns is a beast. That's all I gotta say for that, but... It was awesome, though, for his Superman punch as well as his spear. Um, then next, we had Daniel Bryan come out, and he cuts a good promo on the Wyatt family and says that at the Royal Rumble, he will face Bray Wyatt one-on-one. -on -one. And this kind of got me worried at first because I was worried that both CM Punk and Daniel Bryan were not going to be in the Royal Rumble, and I was like, eh, that's not a good idea because, to me, Daniel Bryan needs to win the Royal Rumble. He, I think he does. Um, I don't really want Batista to win because he's a part-timer, but I kind of get a bad feeling that he is going to win. Don't get me wrong, I'm a fan of Batista, but I have to agree with people. He just should not win that Royal Rumble. It should be Daniel Bryan who wins the Royal Rumble, but we'll see what happens. But uh, I don't want to get into all of that. But 
Anyway, so he says that he'll face Bray Wyatt one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and yeah, like I said, I'm starting to think that it'll be Batista versus Randy Orton at WrestleMania for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Or Brock Lesnar, I don't know. I, I kind of hope not, but... Either way, and then... Um, next we had Fandango versus Xavier Woods. Fandango won. That's all I'm going to say for that. I really don't give a shit about it. And then this, I don't even understand why it was on TV. Then we had Kane come out and apologize to CM Punk for choke slamming him on SmackDown. And I was, the whole time I'm just like, why is this on TV? This is just a filler. This is bullshit. And CM Punk came out, he accepted the apology, and then he attacks Kane. And um, I'm glad they did not drag this out, because it was just stupid. Then after all of that, then we had Billy Gunn uh, and Road Dog come out, and, bi and then we had Billy Gunn versus CM Punk and with Road Dog on commentary, which was pretty funny. And CM Punk defeat Billy Gunn, and then after that, Kane came out and says that Punk will be the number one, uh, the number one person coming in the Royal Rumble match. He'll be the first to come out. And, you know, I've, I've been thinking about this. I'm starting to think, I have to agree with people, I'm starting to think that the final four in the Royal Rumble will be Daniel Bryan, Batista, Brock Lesnar, and CM Punk. I think those are going to be the final four. And I, I don't think Roman Reigns will win the Royal Rumble, but I think he'll be eliminating people left and right. I, I do believe that. I just wanted to say that. Then we had Rey Mysterio versus Alberto Del Rio. Alberto Del Rio won. The match was boring, and it was just too long. Moving on. Then, surprisingly, after the match, Batista comes out again. And I was not expecting him to come out, but Batista comes out again. And when Del Rio tries to punch Batista, Batista gives him a spine buster and then a Batista bomb, which was pretty awesome. I was like, yeah, all right. I mean, I really don't care if Batista buries Alberto Del Rio. I don't care about Alberto Del Rio. Who the fuck does? The guy is boring. He's just boring. I'm sorry. I, I, I mean, his matches are okay, but he's just boring. But either way, it was awesome seeing Batista give a spine buster and Batista bomb to uh, Alberto Del Rio. So Then we had the Big Show and Brock Lesnar face off. And Big Show was pretty funny making fun of Paul Heyman the way that Paul Heyman talked. I thought that was pretty funny. And um, then Brock Lesnar came out with Paul Heyman. But then they leave and then... Big Show says to Brock Lesnar to get his ass out here again and face him like a man. And then Brock Lesnar comes out. He goes, he gets all up in Big Show's face. And then he makes Big Show flinch, which was kind of funny. And then they start flint And then Brock Lesnar and Big Show start brawling. And then the Big Show throws Brock Lesnar out of the ring again. Then Lesnar gets, then Brock Lesnar gets all pissed off and he tries to get back in the ring with a steel chair. But then... Brock, or, yeah, he tries to get in the ring again with a steel chair, then Big Show blocks the steel chair, and then and then Brock Lesnar gets pissed off some more, t t rips apart the announcer table and throws a monitor in the ring at Big Show, Big Show blocks that, and then after all of that, then Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman uh, retreat and head back backstage, so I thought all of that was pretty good, um, so, yeah, it was, it was a pretty good segment, um, I fully expect Brock Lesnar, though, to destroy Big Show at the Royal Rumble. I fully expect it. Who knows? Maybe, maybe the... Well, I don't know if they'll have the ring break, but... Anywho, and then we had Tamina and AJ come out, and... Um, then we had AJ versus the Funkadactyls, and... Um, before I get into the match, I just want to say congratulations to AJ Lee on becoming the longest reigning Divas champion. Um, congratulations to... AJ, uh, she well deserves it. She's like the best diva on the roster. Um, I just wish that, that she had better competition than this bullshit that she has now. If she was against like the divas of old, like uh, Trish, St Trish Stratus, fuck me. Uh, who else? I know there's more than Trish Stratus. There's uh, Michelle McCool. I don't know who else. I mean, I, I can name off a hundred names. Uh, Mickey James. I, f I think you guys know where I'm going with this. Lita, stuff like that. I just, I just wish that she had competition like that than what the fucking clowns that she has competition with now. But uh, uh, the Funkadactyls win in what was a really stupid match. Um, so, yeah, moving on. And then next we had the Usos versus Luke Harper and Eric Rowan of the White Family. 
And the, Uso, and the Usos won after Daniel Bryan comes out and attacks Bray Wyatt. So that, that was also a pretty good segment. I think Bray Wyatt versus Daniel Bryan will be a pretty good match at the Royal Rumble. It might even be the match of the night for all we know. Sorry if you hear that groaning. That's my fucking dog. I don't know what the fucking problem is. Then we had Randy Orton versus Kofi Kingston. The match was just pretty much shitty until John Cena ran out from the backstage area and he started brawling with Randy Orton in the stands and in the arena. So the base, Randy Orton and John Cena are just brawling all over the place. And then Randy Orton manages to escape John Cena, runs outside, and gets into a random car, which was pretty staged. I mean, come on. He just finds a random car and just drives away. Yeah, okay. But either way, Randy Orton escapes in a car, and uh, he pretty much just leaves John Cena, and John Cena high-fives all the fans. Everyone goes home happy. So, yeah. But all in all, guys, I thought this was an okay Raw for a go-home show going to leading into the Royal Rumble. I thought they had some good um, storylines. I thought they did good with... Uh, like John Cena and Randy Orton, that that was good. Um, the Big Show, Brock Lesnar, that was good. Uh, Batiste, having Batista back was great. Um, let's see what else. Uh, what else was good? Well, yeah, just those three fans that I talked about earlier. So, all in all, I thought it did a pretty good job building towards storylines, and um, we'll just have to see where it goes from here. But overall, it was an okay Raw, and uh, yeah. I'll be sh and look forward to and uh, look forward to my uh, Royal Rumble review. I will do a, re a review of the Royal Rumble, and uh, yeah, guys, that's gonna do it. So uh, peace out. Like my video, comment on my video, and subscribe.